So from now we can uh, say that we know the power, how much power of the synchronous machine is there. So we know power is equal to EF into VT upon access into sine delta <coughs> plus of V square by 2 into 1 minus xd xq sin into delta. There is a thing which is called as an electromagnetic power. This is called the electromagnetic power. And this is called the reluctance power. So, one thing which is very important now is that we have seen the synchronous power and we have seen the electromagnetic power. There is a slight difference in that. Here it is sin delta and in the synchronous power we have seen that it is was cos delta. So, please remember this thing when the electromagnetic power is concerned, sin delta will be coming here. And when the uh, synchronous power will be concerned at that time, the cos delta will come, and uh, because of that, cos delta, cos 0 is 1 and cos 90 is 0, and sin delta, sin 0 is 0, and sin 90 is 1. So, from that, one can understand when the electromagnetic power increases, the uh, synchronizing power decreases or the synchronized power increases the electromagnetic power decreases. So that is a very important point now. So we can have the electromagnetic torque, maximum electromagnetic <coughs> torque of the power by differentiating this with respect to delta and putting it to zero. So we can have maximum condition for power in case of electromagnetic power is that so that the delta is equal to 90 degree. So if delta is equal to 90 degree, we will get the maximum power electromagnetic power. But when the delta is 90 degree, we will get 0 uh, synchronizing power. So it is very important for objective type of questions that when delta is equal to 0, the electromagnetic power is when the delta is 90 degree, the electromagnetic power is maximum and the synchronizing power is zero. And uh, at the point, the 45 degrees or the delta is equal to 45 degrees, the electromagnetic power and the uh, synchronizing power both are equal. One more important thing comes into synchronous machine is called a short circuit ratio. <laughs> Is also called as the SCR. It is defined as the uh, <coughs> field current at rated voltage at open circuit divided by the field current at rated voltage at short circuit. <coughs> so, I have On the field current at rated voltage at the short circuit.
this is equal called as the short circuit ratio SCR. This the field current at rated voltage at the open circuit to the field current at rated voltage at the short circuit is also equal to the 1 by Xt, which is an important relationship. Please remember this relationship for objective type of question. This is very important. And we will see what, what are the values of the short circuit for non silent pole and for the silent pole. We can have that. Then for non silent pole, the short circuit ratio must be between 1 and 1.5. And for uh, silent pole type, it is 0.5 to 0.7. So for non silent type of rotor SCR is normally between 1 to 1.5 and for silent type this ratio is 0.5 to 0.7. What is the use of the short circuit ratio first of all? We can have different things and we can understand this thing that what is the, uh, the use of the short circuit ratio as we have seen said that the short circuit ratio here the short circuit ratio is equal to 1 by xt <coughs> so in case of the voltage regulation when we talk about the voltage regulation since if the load, you know, the SCR is low, but obviously the XD would be high. And if the XD would be high, then the voltage regulation will be poorer. So the SCR should be higher. High would have the higher voltage regulation. Second thing comes for the paralleling operation. When the SCR is low, the XD is high, then the So when it comes to parallel operation of generators uh, and if the short circuit ratio is low, it means the XD is again high and at that point it is be difficult to synchronize that to the parallel in, in either to the bus or either to the in, generator. So paralleling operation is difficult when the short circuit ratio is lesser. So the short circuit ratio should be as high as possible. When it comes to short circuit current, a low SCR is resultant high XD. So it means that the low short circuit current would be there. So the fourth thing will be for the self citation. If the alternator is fitted to the long transmission line and it should not be designed with small short circuit ratio, as that would lead to the large terminal voltage and uh, on open circuit due to large capacity currents. That is also important. So one thing also comes that when the XD is high, uh, the efficiency of the machine will go down as uh, we have seen uh, in this will be you know, giving some losses and at that point the losses will be um, uh, detracting the efficiency. So the SCR should be high as possible. <coughs> This is an important thing, the SCR should be high as high it could be and for we have seen that for non silent pole it is between 1 and 1.5 and for silent pole it is 0 0.5 to 0.7. So when it comes to parallel operations of two generators, uh, then the SCR should be as high as possible. And this is very important uh, relationship, SCR is equal to this IF by IF on the circuit and short circuit at rated voltage. It should be equal to, which is normally equal to 1 by Xc. So, this is very important relationship. And on this, a uh, few questions can be asked in objective type of question, objective type of examinations. So, one more thing comes after that is called a 
slip test. It's called the slip test. In the slip test, we normally found the XD and XP. In the slip test, as I said, uh, we'll be finding the XD and XQ. And we know that an XD and XQ will be different for the uh, non silent type of machine, which is also called as the. We have seen that dumbbell type of rotor, uh, that is also called as the double rotor, that is non silent pole. So, this test is normally for sorry, it's not for non silent code, it's, it's for it's for silent code machine only. So, I can write it's for not for. Non silent polar machine, which means that it's for silent polar machine. So, <clears throat> we, the thing which we'll be finding, we'll be finding will be the XD and XQ, and this relationship uh, will be given. So, it is how this test is conducted. First of all, the test is conduct, converted to find the uh, XD, XQ, and the armature resistance if it is required. And and the uh, alternator is energized with the field unexcited and uh, the, we measure the line voltages and from the formula xd xq we find the xd and xq we can say that xd is equal to b maximum to 100 to 3 r minimum and for XQ B minimum divided by 103 and maximum. So we will get the XQ. So by this, we can find the XD and XQ, and these two relationships are very important in objective type of questions again. XD is equal to B max by under root of 3 IB, and XQ is equal to. B mean divided by under root of 3 i maximum. So this relationship also is important for objective type of question. Please remember this formula also. <coughs>